Okay. So everything I just said basically before, where I screwed it all up, will be more explained, I guess, better explained in the handout that I wrote some, some years back. So just know that a tetrad represents two like chromosomes, what we call two homologous chromosomes. And if you're not a geneticist, all this means is, is that the 23 chromosomes that you have right now from your dad and the 23 that you have from your mom in each of your cells, all those represent duplicate chromosome, duplicate chromosomal information, right? We don't use all that information. It's just expressed. Some things are expressed. Some things are not expressed. The trait that is dominant, right, is what is expressed, right? Okay. In most cases. So that's where we get this, um, the uniqueness, right, of these gametes, is that when they come together, it makes you completely unique. It takes traits from your mom and dad and then utilizes them in a special way. So the tetrad is just two homologous chromosomes coming together, having similar traits. Then they cross over in prophase, right? And then we just line them up in metaphase. So what you need to know for the test is what is presented in the bold. Right? First of all, know this. One chromosome always equals two sister chromatids after DNA replication. So if you never, ever, ever notice this, even in AMP1, right? Anytime you take chromosomes like this, so you're always at 46 little L-shaped chromosomes like this in all your cells, until they in undergo interphase, then all your chromosomes do what? Okay. Double themselves, right? So this doubling takes place in inter interphase, in both mitosis and meiosis 1. That's a doubling, but it's still called one chromosome, right? So you know something's about to happen, if you see chromosomes that look like an X shape, right? If you see chromosomes that look like this, it means it's a finished product in some way. Chromosomes that look like this don't stay like that. They always are eventually going to divide in some way, okay? All right, so that's what we get from interphase. Prophase 1, what's the key words from prophase 1? Tetras and crossovers, beautiful. This is how you study for meiosis, right? Then in metaphase, you align what? 23 tetrads, right? Not 23 chromosomes, not 46 chromosomes. You align specifically 23 tetrads. You are aligning 46 chromosomes, yes, but you're aligning them in tetrads. So I'd like for you to know that you're aligning 23 tetrads at the center. Which means, again, if we go back to the whole pipe cleaner thing, Right? Maybe we go back with better eyes this time. So 23 from dad and 23 from mom are coming together like this. So we have 23 pairs of these things. Right? Which means 23 X's on this side, 23 <coughs> X's on this side. So that when they split, how many do you get? 23 and 23. But they're still like this, aren't they? They're still in X form. So what needs to happen? In mouse is 2. The bottom like that, right? Okay. All right. So that that just describes how we get through meiosis one, and then know the products. We're left with two haploid cells in telophase one at the end of meiosis. At this point, if you wanted to like throw this in there, this is where you would be known as a secondary spermatocyte. At the end of meiosis one, you would be known as a secondary spermatocyte or a secondary oocyte. So you come into meiosis as a primary spermatocyte and a primary oocyte. You finish meiosis one, now you're graduated, right? And you're called now a secondary, secondary spermatocyte or a secondary oocyte. So going through meiosis one, it's always a primary spermatocyte and a primary oocyte. Going through meiosis one. At the time it splits and finishes its product, you're now known as a secondary oocyte and a secondary spermatocyte. So in the beginning of meiosis 2, you're starting as what? 
a secondary spermatocyte and oocyte. In meiosis II, that's what you're starting with. At the end of meiosis II, you are now called a spermatid. Right, and at the end of meiosis II for the woman, which only takes place if it's fertilized, by the way, women don't complete meiosis II unless it's fertilized. Then you're known basically as an ovum, a mature ovum. And we only use the one. So what we'll see is, in males, we do get four unique gametes at the end of meiosis II. All called spermatids. Right? This is taking place where? In the... Spermatogenesis, which is basically the meiotic cycle in men. The seminiferous tubules, right? So the spermatid is just the immature sperm, right? And they're sent where? To the epididymis to gain their tail, right? Okay. Those are the sex cells. Those are the gametes. All right. So slowly but surely come together. I would definitely, definitely, definitely know this right here. The products of meiosis one are two haploid cells, chromosomal number of 23. Even if you don't understand how, <laughs> sometimes you just have to run with it, right? Run the flag. And the entire purpose of meiosis one, the book says it's to, it's to cut it down to 23, and that's true. But I would add to that the entire purpose of meiosis one is to have crossover, recombination, and to divide the number down to 23. So I would include that crossover being very important because that's how you get genetic variability. You know, you wouldn't have it if it weren't for that. And then meiosis two, what do we get? We're aligning 23 dyads, right? So imagine now in meiosis two, 23 red X's, okay, with blue tips if possible. This is meiosis two, right? Metaphase two would be what? Lining up 23 dyads, right? If we want to really play the game, if this were mitosis, how many chromosomes would be lining up here? 46. But in meiosis, it's haploid, so meiosis two has 23 chromosomes lining up, right? Up and down. And they call them dyads. Each dyad is a chromosome. Each chromosome is a combination of two sister chromatids, right? So just getting the terminology straight would be something pretty important. So again, in meiosis two, we've got 23 chromosomes, right? We've got two things going on, by the way. This is one haploid cell. The other one's over here doing the same exact thing. So 23 chromosomes means 23 dyads, which equals, each of these chromosomes or dyads, in other words, would equal two chromatids, right? So even though they're together right now, we're really talking about, right, 46 chromatids. Isn't that crazy? That's what can screw you up. 23 chromosomes equals how many chromatids? 46 chromatids, but they're still joined, so we don't think of them as 46, we think of them as 23. Only when they split do we consider them separate, okay? So that's how you get two from this one and then two from the other haploid cell, giving you four unique gametes at the end, four haploid cells at the end of cell phase two. Okay. <laughs> that just give you a headache. It's really just God playing with math in the worst way. You know, God had fun doing all this, I suppose. All right, so key terms to look for in meiosis two: We have dyads. We're haploid all the way through, aren't we? All the way through. And we start meiosis two as a secondary spermatocyte or secondary oocyte, right? The women, their eggs are arrested in basically prophase one all from birth up to menarche, when they start their monthly cycle, right? Women are born with all their eggs that they're ever going to have, whereas men develop new sperm all day long up until their 70s, right? So women have a certain finite number of eggs at birth. 
But every month, one of those, usually, is matured in a follicle, right? And that's where, through that menstrual cycle, through the ovulation, I should say, that's where they continue meiosis 1. So they're stuck in prophase 1, right, in the ovary right now. Then once a month, what happens? We ovulate an egg, right? Now it starts to complete meiosis 1 as it's maturing, right? Then what happens? We're arrested in metaphase 2 until it's fertilized. So we'll see that coming up. So okay. where do they, the egg split then to have identical? What's that? I said, where do they split to have identical? To have identical? Yeah, upon fertilization, I don't, you know, I don't know where part of the cycle that that would happen. Oh, do you? Yeah, that's, that's very cool. Okay, so just some pictures here. And notice, just be aware, anytime you see all these single L's, L-shaped chromosomes, that indicates that what has not taken place yet? The DNA replication has not taken place. So that's where you're starting from. And they call that a spermatogonium or oogonium, you know, you're, where you start from the, the basic cell before you start dividing. Then this is telling you what? Everything on myosis 1, what are the products? Two haploid cells, even though they're still doubled, right? So each of these two haploid cells will now enter meiosis 2. So this one is the same as that one. This one is the same as that one. And now what do you do? You're lining up the dyads. So if you needed to make sense of this picture, because this is always kind of messed with me, you don't just see two green chromosomes right there on the left, do you? How many should it be? 23 of them. Right? So they need to add 21 more in that picture if you made the picture big enough to make it happen. But that's where people get messed up is that in pictures it always just shows two. It's not just two. It's really 23 on the left, right, in the green, and 23 of the purple, whatever you all call that color. And now they just split the chromatids, split the dyads, and they went up with four daughter cells. By the way, when they say daughter cells, it's no sexual orientation there. It's just a term they use for daughter cells. Okay. So that does the meiosis stuff. In this picture, yeah? With the, are they four identical or because they have certain different traits on them? The crossover makes them unique at the, at, unique, at the very, very end yeah. of meiosis 2, right? Four sperm, sperm. That's right, because each of them would have a tip or no tip right. from the other chromosome. That's right. So in this picture, this is a horrible picture, unlabeled, but mitosis is what we have on the left over here. Meiosis is right here. Notice what we get. What would this represent? The end of what? Meiosis 1, Right? So this is a great, since it's unlabeled, it's a great place to put in 23 chromosomes right here. So write 23, right, or you can just write N, but it is 23 chromosomes over here, 23 chromosomes over there. Or you could write 23 dyads over there, 23 dyads over here, and what was up here? 23 tetrads. So this represents what stage? Metaphase, and that would be prophase in an early prophase, right? Okay, but this is the end of meiosis 1 right here. These are your products of meiosis 1, this category. And then they're skipping all the events of meiosis 2, but these are the products of meiosis 2 right here. Well, at least getting to it. Then it would, what, split down, right? No, actually, no, here we go. 23 there, 23 there, 23 there, 23 there. So that is the products. I looked at it wrong the first time. So that's, what's, that's what I hate about these pictures. They don't label them correctly. That would be 23 chromosomes on each of those last four cells, the end of meiosis 2. Okay. In this picture, if you wanted to use it, go right ahead. It's just uh, some people like it, some people don't.